If an ethical neighbour decides to let grass and weeds grow out tall enough to create a nice habitat for wildlife that may cross over and eat my crops or my poultry, affecting the yield of my system and my family's livelihood in an ethical bioregion, is the onus on me to provide defensive solutions if the neighbour refuses to manage it or should I resort to passing laws to enforce it? What kind of ethical dispute resolution system is ideal in a permaculture bioregion? Well, I think we have to go back to our pattern lecture here and look at the scale of order of size in application to such an event. So let's paint the scenario because this question definitely starts with it depends. Let's say that you're in the suburbs and your garden next door, which might be a thousand square meters, quarter of an acre, probably as a large garden, becomes wilderness. That's really not enough area to have anything but a small amount of predators, a small amount of problem. You're not going to have large predators moving in that are going to come and eat your poultry, possibly. Also, you have a lot of domestic predators, you're pruning your garden down low, so you're close to people. It's a small influence. So if it's just a neighbor in a suburb, not a problem. Now, if we go out larger, it becomes actual wilderness. Now, if you move up next to wilderness, here I'm sitting on a camping shelter at Zaytuna Farm. We've got a food forest right here in Evolution. And next to us is a wilderness gully. It's definitely zone five. Now, we've moved up to zone five. We have a zone five next to us, a wilderness. And you can have issues at times with wildlife coming over. You can here you can have wallaby, which is like a small kangaroo, or, or Australian hares come and nip the top off trees. People action will keep it back. Our dog action will keep it back. We'll plan for it because we've 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 set a system up next to a zone five gully and so you have to compromise with moving up close to large wilderness now if somebody has a large property next to your property and that becomes wilderness enough to stimulate an ecology that involves large predation or um, wildlife that actually is going to move into your crop area I think at this point in history, um, someone who's prepared to let their property go to wilderness, and we're talking about a large enough property, um, you've got to work out like, well, should I, should I protest about someone allowing wilderness to become the ecology next door? Uh, should we lock up areas only in agriculture when at the present point in time, agriculture is just about the most destructive activity on, on the planet? Um, can we define agriculture? Um, these are things we have to work out, I suppose. But really, when we're looking at the order of size, the order and scale of size in relationship, uh, we don't have a lot of time to do this because there are definitely um, major issues coming up. Um, the suburbs, the, the, the urban agriculture is definitely going to be the most productive and diverse um, systems that we can install. So you've got your small gardens in the suburbs, and a small area of wilderness there is not going to have a, enough integrity to really be that much of a problem where it's dense population. So you have an urban agriculture. Surrounding that, you have a, you have a perimeter urban agriculture potential, very close to the, to the major populations. And around that, you have rangeland on the shallower slopes, farm forestry on the steeper slopes, and you may have gullies or areas or, you know, difficult landscape that becomes wilderness intersecting that. And so in some cases, the wilderness is going to intersect right through urban urbanization or, or dense populations. So that means together, we have to work together as a community, as a cooperative nation of people who all think the same way in majority. I say in majority because I know there's other questions coming up about this and how we, how we how we regulate these things. But we, as the majority, have to cooperate as a community of how we achieve these situations, how we deal with these situations, how we come up with solutions for wilderness that comes in close to 
dense populations, how some people allow an area to go into wilderness. And you've got to say that's mostly a good thing. But if that affects your family's um, livelihood, are, are you close to urban areas? Are you in a perimeter urban area? Or are, are, are you yourself at a distance so far away from where your product is consumed that it maybe is never going to have a really good energy audit and it probably either should be wilderness itself, rangeland or forestry being that far away. Now rangeland is usually not affected by wilderness that much. Uh, large predators maybe. Um, and then forestry in establishment phase can be a problem once forests are up, as in farm forestry, product forestry, diverse forestry still, but productive. It's less of a problem once we've got establishment. So these are, these are design challenges. I don't think we have to go into battle with our neighbours. We have to go into cooperation uh, as a, a, a community of understanding. And the understanding comes from ethical design science application. Thank <music> you.